for ultimate EV performance, it's no longer sufficient for a brand to merely give its electric vehicle a drive motor on the front axle to add to the one at the back. As Audi's two e-tron S models show, ideally you'd want three motors. The result is more power, more grip and better handling. It's all good. Audi performance cars have carried the S badge since the 100 model based S4 in the early 90s, but this is the first time it's crossed the divide into the brand's growing family of electrified e-tron models. Here, it signals a groundbreaking precedent in volume production, this e-tron S Sportback model and its e-tron S Stablemate being the market's first EVs to use three electric drive motors, one at the front and two at the rear. The result, predictably, is explosive performance. Even more significantly, having two motors on the rear axle has allowed Audi to further reinvent the EV version of its Quattro four-wheel drive system. Drive at speed, able to switch not only from front to rear, but between each of the back wheels, so grip and traction are never in doubt. Audi reckons that this system sets a fresh standard for the way that a big EV can handle, and it provides it in both standard SUV and, as in this case, in sportback versions of its large luxury Eton crossover model. So let's put it to the test. It's been over 40 years since Audi redefined performance driving with its Quattro all-wheel drive system. Uh, with the e-tron S models, you could argue that the brand has redefined it once again uh, for a very different era. The motor industry survived for over a century in its combustion period with only one vehicular power source for its products. EV motoring is only just about entering its second decade and already we have a car with three in the form of the top e-tron S Sportback performance variant that we're trying here. It's the world's first electric vehicle to use three drive motors. The larger electric motor that on a conventional e-tron Sportback sits at the rear has here been moved to the front and that frees up space for two smaller motors to sit on the back axle allowing torque vectoring and fully variable torque distribution between the rear wheels for what should be a considerably enhanced cornering ability. And so it proves uh, even the standard e-tron Sportback models corner better than you might expect such a prodigiously heavy SUV to be able to do and that's thanks to low battery placement on the car's modified MLB platform and a consequently low centre of gravity. The electrified Quattro system on those standard models works well too. It seamlessly shunts drive from front to rear in a manner that will give you real confidence through fast sweeping turns. Not quite as much as you'll get with a competing Jaguar I-Pace though. This three motor S model though takes things to another level. Uh, the difference here is that you get real confidence through tighter, twistier turns and that's thanks to the electronic torque vectoring system's ability to individually control the amount of drive fed to each individual rear wheel with pinpoint accuracy. And that's based on the grip and load active on either side of the car as you drive through each corner. It's sort of like a mechanical limited step differential except that here there's nothing except software linking the two rear motors and they respond up to 25% quicker. Uh, while all this is going on, wheel selective torque control on the front axle uses the discs and pads to gently brake the inside front wheel as you turn and that further helps to rotate the car into the turn as the rear tyres edge towards their limit. The whole setup apparently allows for a very un ev like lure oversteer on a circuit but for fast road use the traction it provides is genuinely astonishing. When we first tried the rather flat-footed SUV version of this e-tron model back in 2019 we'd never have believed that a version of the same car could be made to handle like this. As promised a fresh standard has been set for EV dynamics here. The only disappointment, as with the more ordinary e-tron Sportback models, lies with the relative lack of steering feel. That's a familiar Audi issue, although the variable ratio progressive rack is certainly accurate. If only though it gave you the same confidence as the drive system, what a car this would be! 
Extra motive power in this S model means a higher output, of course, up to 435 PS with 808 Newton meters of torque, or with the S mode engaged for overtaking 503 PS, and that's a thumping 973 Newton meters of torque. It's enough to simply hurl this Audi at the horizon. Uh, 62 from rest is recorded at 4.5 seconds, but it feels quicker than that because the pulling power is so instant. It tails off only as you edge close to the 130 MPH maximum. Drive more sensibly and a claimed range of up to 236 miles is supposed to be possible. Again, that's distinctly on the modest side. Something like a Tesla Model S Plaid is even faster than this top Audi, but it still manages to deliver another 154 miles of range. Still, if you can make the drive range and the flaky public charging infrastructure work for you, then there's no reason why this e-tron Sportback wouldn't too. As with the more conventional Audi models, it isn't best in class in every particular area, but it's there or thereabouts in enough of them to an extent that creates a very complete product indeed. Especially if you can stretch up to this S model, it's good enough to reassure us that, contrary to expectations, driving enthusiasts really do have something to look forward to in this new EV era after all. In this S specification form, the e-tron Sportback sets itself apart with key silver trimming features, most notably for this S specific front bumper, which features that color for the spoiler lip and for the air intake surrounds. As with the ordinary version of this model, there is this huge octagonal single frame grille with lower e-tron branding, and that's flanked by LED headlights, which on request can, as here, feature the company's latest digital matrix technology with its movie style animations. In profile, more S-specific silver trimming features for the side sills and the door mirror housings. Nice touches include the optional virtual mirrors, L-shaped pods which protrude on aerodynamic stalks, replacing the ordinary door mirrors, and also the inclusion of charging flaps on both sides of the car behind the front wheel arches. They feature copper-themed e-tron branding, and they neatly open with a push of a button. And of course, uh, there are big wheels uh, on this S model. They sit in arches that are 23 millimeters wider so that they can accommodate the massive 22 inch rims on request. We have the 21 inch five Y spoke rotor gloss anthracite black diamond cut sport alloys here. At the rear, where there's model-specific badging, the upper edge of the bumper and the lower diffuser both gain more striking silver finishing with S-trim. Uh, this potent-looking diffuser stretches the width of the underside with a distinctive design signature that's intended to draw the eye to the absence of exhaust pipes. Uh, all the underpinnings here, of course, are shared with an ordinary uh, boxy e-tron SUV. And that means that uh, unlike Audi's smaller or larger electric vehicles, there's no EV specific chassis, but instead there's a modified version of the conventional MLB platform that all the company's larger models now use. Enough of the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. Inside this S model is set apart by these Valcona leather trimmed super sport seats with their diamond stitching and S embossing and by little touches like the S embossing on the gear shifter, uh, the illuminated S branded door sill scuff plates and by a subtle red surround for the stop start button. Uh, there's a race style flat bottom steering wheel too, through which you view a 12.3 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen upgraded to plus status, which means you can select uh, a more focused extra e-tron sport single dial layout. Otherwise, everything's exactly as it would be on any other e-tron or e-tron sportback large SUV, which means you get two central MMI touch response displays that blend into vast swathes of piano black trim. Uh, the seats are superbly comfortable and they position you fairly loftily. And that's one of the reasons why forward vision is excellent. 
and there's plenty of interior storage, including this central open-sided compartment between the seats, which is intended to have the feel of a light, sleek sculpture. It's unusual, much like the gear shifter that we mentioned earlier on, which is operated by a hand rest, which appears to float above the console and is activated by a one-touch action conducted either with the thumb or the index finger. Okay, let's take a seat in the rear. This Sportback's 20 millimeter reduction in ceiling height might bother you if you're a six footer. Your head will be brushing this immaculately crafted roof liner, but otherwise it feels pretty spacious back here. We'll finish with a look at cargo space. Now there is a compartment under the bonnet, but since that's only 60 litres in size, we'll ignore it and focus on the boot area. You get a powered tailgate, of course, which rises to reveal a 555 litre luggage bay for this sport back body shape, which is 45 litres less than the ordinary boxier e-tron SUV body shape can offer. Uh, there's also a useful underfloor storage area. Fold down the rear bench, which folds conveniently in a 40-20-40 split, and 59 195 litres of capacity is freed up. That's 60 litres less than the ordinary e-tron SUV body shape. The e-tron S models command a premium of around £9,000 over comparable two-motor S-line equipped e-tron 55 Quattro variants in the standard range. At the time of this test, that meant a starting price for the e-tron S Quattro with the conventional SUV body shape of around £87,000. You'll need around £1,800 more for this sleeker sport back body style. Either way, that gets you standard e-tron S trim. You'll need another £15,000 with either body shape for plusher Vorsprung spec. As for rivals to this e-tron S Sportback, well, there aren't any other three-motor EV models in the segment, but there are plenty that you might be tempted by. Uh, the money being asked here is about £6,000 more than a Tesla Model S in base long-range spec, and about £10,000 more than a Porsche Taycan Sport Turismo. Uh, we'd also want to look at the top version of BMW's iX model, the X-Drive 50, which only costs about £3,000 more than this e-tron S Sportback, while offering around 130 miles more driving range. If you'd be as happy with a super sport saloon as with a coupe SUV, then you'll want to know that this e-tron S Sportback costs nearly £10,000 more than Audi's alternative super sports EV model in this segment, the four-door e-tron GT Quattro. And that's a car which offers up to 27 horsepower more power. So the competition's tough, which means that this car needs to be well equipped. And of course it is. The standard e-tron S model gets you pretty much everything that's included with mid-range S-line trim on the standard e-tron models. And that includes Matrix LED headlamps and all the silver themed extra exterior updates that we briefed you on already in our design section. Plus a further addition of 21 inch wheels with a special S design. Uh, also super sport seats with diamond stitching, uh, four corner air suspension with an electronic shock absorption control system and also an Audi Beam Plus feature which projects the e-tron brand name onto the ground when you open the front door at night. If you want more equipment, Audi offers a top e-tron S Sportback Vorsprung model, which gets unique five-arm interference design, titanium grey, Audi Sport wheels and a panoramic roof. Plus, Audi's uber-clever digital matrix lights, which tailor their beam to different types of driving and which include enhanced light animations that can be customised. Inside, there's a Bang & Olufsen sound system, a head-up display, a heated steering wheel, there's powered door closure, and the multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack. Rear seat folk, uh, they're looked after with a four zone deluxe automatic climate control system and heated seats. 
As for safety kit, well, like all e-tron models, this one gets the Audi Presense front and basic autonomous braking system, plus lane departure warning, distance warning, high beam assist, and rest recommendation. Now, should the worst happen and you have a crash which activates the airbags, then a standard Audi Connect safety and service feature will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. Uh, Vorsprung trim further includes Audi's City Assist pack. Uh, that includes five main elements. Side assist, which is basically a blind spot monitor. Cross traffic assist front, which warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions. Uh, cross traffic assist rear, now that warns you of uh, oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Uh, there's also pre-sense rear, now this warns you if you're just about to be hit from behind. And exit warning, which uh, warns the driver of potential dangers of traffic approaching from the rear when a door is open. Vorsprung trim also includes Audi's tour pack, which is optional on their standard model and which includes six further camera features. Arguably the cleverest part of that package is adaptive cruise assist, which uses a radar sensor, a laser scanner, a front camera and ultrasonic sensors all networked together to permanently monitor your e-tron surroundings. Drawing on feedback from these systems, plus local speed restrictions and navigation data, adaptive cruise assist works works with an integrated predictive efficiency assistant to proactively control acceleration, braking, lane positioning and distance to the vehicle in front. Uh, there are four other tour pack features, traffic sign recognition, turn assist which detects approaching vehicles at junctions when the turn indicators are activated, a collision avoidance assistant and an emergency assist feature which is able to autonomously bring the car to a safe and controlled stop if you don't respond to repeated warnings about your drifting out of lane. As might be the case, for example, if you were suddenly being taken ill at the wheel. This e-tron S Sportback's 95 kilowatt hour battery has a WLTP rated range of between 215 and 236 miles. It's worth mentioning that this is 62 miles less than the other luxury sports EV model that Audi offers in this segment, the slightly less expensive e-tron GT Quattro, which uses the same battery pack. For the boxier SUV e-tron S body shape, the figure is uh, WLTP rated at between 213 and 232 miles. Replenishing such a high energy capacity battery isn't for the faint hearted. You'd need 42 hours to do it from a domestic three pin plug. A seven kilowatt garage wall box would do the job in 14 hours. You could reduce that figure to 8.9 hours with an 11 kilowatt wall box. A 50 kilowatt public point would take this e-tron Sportback's battery from 20% capacity to 80% in 70 minutes. And if you were fortunate enough to find a 150 kilowatt public charging point, uh, that would enable up to 95% of battery capacity to be replenished in only 50 minutes or 80% in just 30 minutes. The brand has its own charging network, the e-tron charging service, which across Europe provides access to over 120,000 charging points throughout 21 countries. Uh, this provides subscribers with one RFID payment card accepted at a vast number of charge points operated by 18 suppliers across the UK and right across Europe, and it offers two fixed price charging tariffs. Audi has also partnered with Shell, Ford, the BMW Group and other VW Group brands to create Ionity, a joint venture aimed at establishing a European high power charging network. At the time of this test there were around 400 Ionity quick charge stations across the main traffic arteries in Europe. For pan-European motoring uh, you'll want to have an account with these because at the time of this test the pay-as-you-go rate was a hefty 69 pence per kilowatt. To begin with, you'll need a card to unlock the charging points, but shortly technology will be introduced that will allow your e-tron Sportback to authorise itself and to remotely unlock the charging station. 
The brand's MyAudi app allows you to manage all charging processes remotely. These include checking the battery and range status, uh, starting the charge process, programming timers and displaying uh, driving statistics. You can also use the app to preheat or pre-cool the car prior to departure so you don't have to use battery power doing that once you're underway. A particularly proactive way of increasing the distance that you can travel in this car between charges lies in the effective use of its various braking regeneration options, uh, which Addy reckons are the most efficient on the market. Not everyone likes the way that aggressive brake regeneration can virtually bring the car to a stop all on its own, uh, which is why you can turn this feature off or dial it back. The central screen's efficiency assist section allows you to switch between automatic and manual brake recuperation. When the whole setup's working to its max, it really does make a big difference, reclaiming spent energy as you cruise, slow or stop. When the regeneration system's fully active and you take your foot off the accelerator, uh, the electric motors work in reverse. They become uh, generators of electricity to recharge the battery. In fact, on a hilly road with regeneration set to the max, it's possible to gain as much as 70% of the energy used going uphill uh, through regenerative braking on the way down. We like that stat. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, probably that for company car users, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings because they fall into base VED band A and they will attract just 1% of benefiting kind company car taxation in the 2021 to 2022 tax year and 2% in each of the following years. There's no VED road tax to pay either, and you'll also possibly be interested in the fact that as an EV vehicle owner, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge too. As for ownership peace of mind, uh, well, you're limited to the usual unremarkable three year and 60,000 mile Audi warranty. Uh, you can extend that to five years at extra cost, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, the battery is covered by its own eight year, uh, 100,000 mile warranty. The same as Jaguar offers, but slightly inferior to Tesla's deal, which covers the battery for eight years uh, with unlimited mileage. Maintenance is obviously more straightforward than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. Uh, there's no fuel tank, there's no exhaust system, and there's obviously no internal combustion engine. Uh, you wouldn't think that, though, to look at the service intervals needed here uh, every 20,000 miles or every two years. Still, a Jaguar I-Pace is much the same. Uh, that needs a garage visit every 21,000 miles. As usual, it'll probably be sensible to consider one of the Audi service plans. Uh, those will cover you for virtually everything in advance. Uh, there are four plans available, ranging from two years and 18,000 miles to four years and 36,000 miles. Insurance is a top of the shop group 50E though. Brokers, it seems, don't like electric cars. Still, the news is reasonably positive when it comes to residual values. Uh, according to industry experts CAP, an e-tron S Sportback will still be worth 46% of its original value or £40,300 after three years or 30,000 miles of use. Direct rivals struggle to match that kind of showing and as a result, an e-tron should be very cost effective to lease for company or private drivers. So what's the bottom line here? Well, having a twin motor system on the rear axle and a single motor up front doesn't just deliver huge performance and impressive traction, it also significantly enhances the fine level of control that can be used to thread this e-tron model through a series of corners at speed. And that delivers a level of agility that you simply wouldn't expect from anything this big and heavy. It's difficult to think of another large EV more in need of this kind of dynamic enhancement than the standard Audi e-tron and e-tron Sportback models, which in their more straightforward forms can feel a little flat-footed compared to rivals. The S models, though, they're very different. Don't choose the ordinary version without trying this one. It's as simple as that.